No, but the di- all no, morality hinges on our feelings. I no, agree. That, that's right. the that's wait a minute. That's the key difference. Is that me and Adam are trying to understand and look at the morality feelings. outside yes. of morality and understand why certain moralities are successful in the world. And you're looking at it from the perspective of being within it and just saying, well, it makes me feel gross, so it's bad. Yeah. Okay. And cool. I just don't yeah. see how that's persuasive to Su- anyone. Success, I really think we need to drop this criteria, right? Because this is a mm-hmm. terrible criteria for judging morality. Success, we're going to everyone gets a trophy oh, route okay, now. Okay, What's okay, going on here? Wait a minute. Hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> Sitch, what, why do you disagree with that statement? When we Wait a minute. When we talk about moral systems being successful, we're not talking about attributing them to being good or evil. Totally. No, okay. We're simply talking about whether it's successful or not. Yes. Whether it's powerful, right? Yes. Whether yes. it spreads its influence with the Whether world, it's right? hegemonic. I like that well, success word. Success also has, you know, so, so whether the people Mongols within the society the are happy too. Successful you, moral system Sargon. of the Middle Ages. So, but the, it's the Middle Ages, okay? They didn't have airplanes in the Middle sure. Ages, okay? Well, they are you saying that they also had the best? Are you saying that they, they also had the best aeronautics? Uh, they they had Buddhism. <laughs> They had moral systems that I think from a modern perspective mm-hmm. and from the current, like the, the perspective at the time, everyone else other than the Mongols thought was preferable. The problem is the Mongols were just more powerful. And it's not mm-hmm. like, you know, people at the time were just like watching the Mongols. Like it, literally every year, the Mongols would decimate a city. You know, every just, year. No, I mean, multiple sure. times a year. But what, what does all, that mean? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll tell, can, I tell, can I say what it means? Parts of the planet. Can like, I say the, the can, horror of it was just unfathomable? No one came away from watching the listen, Mongols operate thinking you're, hmm, they were Sargon. Won. You're making such an emotional argument right now. It's so bad. It's well, no, so no, no, bad. no. There, no, what there, you no. Mean? Wait, hold on. There's I, there's logic here. Okay. No, no. If you have, if if your neighbors are the Mongolians and they're wiping everyone out, okay, and you're living in your hippie commune and you're threatened to be wiped out. You have to contend with the Mongols. That's yes. the whole point of what we're talking about. They're part all of the these universe. cultures and all these societies are ba- are constantly banging up against each other. And so you have to keep adjusting your society. You have to keep adjusting your culture to whatever the world or whatever the universe is throwing at you. And one of those forces is the Mongolians. So yeah. I would say it is a moral failing if you live in some society that can only exist if there's not the threat of someone coming in and destroying your city. That's a great yeah. point, Sitchin. Before you f- go on, no, Sargon, on, let me, on, no, 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 let me, I, you talk, let me talk, let me talk. No, Sargon, let me talk. I want to, I just want to lay out, I want to lay out what no, Sargon is doing You've got to here. let me address Sitchin's point. Let, 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 let Sargon respond. Let Sargon respond. Let Sargon respond. Seriously, because this is literally just a justification of might makes right. It's not. Yes, it is. No, it no, it's is. not. It is not. Right? And you, uh, since you've already laid out the criteria, a moral system that propagates itself and dominates its neighbors is the best moral system. No, you For are saying people, that. Obviously, Sargon. it is. No, I'm not. I'm saying the opposite. Sitch has just confirmed that that's what he's saying. Right? No, so I said no. I said for those yeah. people, obviously, that's the best system. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So you have to contend with that, and you have to create a moral system or a society that can fight against that if you want to survive. Right. Right, but you, uh, you are you. Do, when do, we, do you Sargon, think, Sargon, Sargon, do you think might makes right is the best moral of, system? I'm just curious. No, no, he doesn't. Okay. No, obviously. Well, why uh, not? When, when we use the criteria of because there there is innate moral right and wrong contained within acts. I, I think it's this is I the metaphysical loading of the dis, of the very nature of the description of what we use a murder. It is always wrong to murder. It's always well, a moral wrong. We yeah, judge it to be wrong. It, I, I don't yeah. know. Not everyone judges yeah. it to be wrong. That's right. The Mongols don't judge it to be wrong. Yeah, but right. that's why we judge the Mongol civilization. Yeah, but you to don't. Be morally, I agree. But you don't. Right? You don't agree in a, with objective morality, right? No. Okay. But no. So, but no, so when you say no it's always that morality, morality is objective because it, the word well, objective. Do, but... No, they don't. They're all wrong. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I agree the, that the word wrong. objective means from the perspective of the universe. Well, Unless if they, you're yeah, but I'm talking about from people that with a moral teleology but, talking about through God, we, right. there are, we there are. You not, I know you're not religious, so I know you don't think that. So you don't think that there is an objective morality. I agree that there's no objective morality, but religious people obviously do. But we're not religious, so we're I not talking about that. that. So we, but what we, I'm saying we that when you say our morality right. and just, the weight of it from our moral communities, from subjective, saying, your your justification is qualities. terrible, though. Well, yeah, hold on, it's hold on, completely hold on. terrible. It's I, how I is your how is your moral justification <laughs> not might makes right? You're just coming in here and saying because I said so is basically what you're saying. 
Well, it's actually because we say so, right? But yeah, that, also, how is that not are, might are... makes right? How is that not might makes right? You just I, said I, I might make right explain. is terrible, but I would love to explain. Right. So okay. the 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 nature, the metaphysical nature of the the, the metaphysical loading of the mm -hmm. statement mm -hmm. implicitly appeals to something that we have a hard time describing. Now, I'm just going to call it a state of affairs. And it comes down to Haidt's uh, moral taste of, what was, what, what was it, sacredness and profanity? Yes. Is that, which one is that? Yeah. I can't, it's been a long time since I've read Haidt. Sanctity degradation, but, but. There we go, sanctity degradation, right. Okay, so what, what's, what is assumed in the idea of sanctity and, sanctity and degradation? The, what is assumed is that where there is a state of affairs that is somehow noble, that is somehow good, that is somehow um, wholesome to the human condition, right? Not, not having been raped as a child. This is a state of affairs in which there's a kind of sanctity to that person. Children are born innocent. Defiling the innocence of a child is degrading a particular state of affairs, and we automatically consider that wrong because of the emotional damage that it does to the individual and the moral damage I, like, I don't have a better term for it but there's a kind of moral like a metaphysical shell that we project around ourselves and onto one another you know like i wouldn't do that to someone else and you wouldn't think that someone else would do that to someone else blah, blah blah and so this this sanctity that we hold and, and annex to ourselves is something we play with with language and it matters it is a part of us and this is why you get like you know the judgments on women particularly right a woman who is particularly promiscuous is someone who doesn't respect their own sanctity the state of affairs that is their metaphysical reputation uh, is is just non-existent and people don't respect them at all whereas a particularly um a discerning woman who keeps herself very prim and proper and is you know not uh, you know, like a slut or something like that. She she generally gets more respect, and that's just something's innate to us. We in, in our language, in our culture, in our moral system, and it's this metaphysical shell that is attacked when someone tries to normalize bestiality, and when someone I don't have a better word for it, but violates or penetrates that shell, uh, is when you start doing sort of psychic or moral damage to yourself again it's not scientific yeah it's definitely this, real. i got you and got so, it it is well, not scientific it, at all so no, not, no, not at all, but no morality is scientific i mean i'm waiting i keep waiting for you to pull out and say god said so man i really do well, when when is when does yeah, god come in where does god well, come into we, this conversation well no it's our moral community it's how we deal yeah, with you're calling another. god metaphysical whatever but you're not i mean <laughs> well it's not like trying to have a conversation where there's like real justification like there's something well, let me, tangible let me, here. that is a real justification Wait, let where me break. where let me, well, hold on let me break this down okay it sounds it's like not... from what from what you said that there are two possible things going on here the first is either that it sounds i don't think you mean to do this but it sounds like you're sort of making a claim um, an objective moral claim the way that no. you're wording things as no. if they simply no. are no. or it's subjective all morality is I understand subjective. That. but this is the way it sounds okay or yeah. that you're basically saying that well whatever the majority of people deem they feel right about is yeah. moral might makes right because they're the majority yeah i got no. it no well what are you saying then this is your what moral system where is, we're I, you're an atheist and you don't have a sense of sanctity I do. What do you? I, well, listen, okay, well, I'm okay, castrating okay, and okay, killing so let me, let me ask pedophiles. You, let me ask you okay? Do you accept? Do you, do, you, do you accept that, In that there order. are things that you can do to yourself that degrade your moral sanctity? Yes, sure. I'm a human being. Right. Is fucking an animal one of those things? Sure. Yes. Right. Yeah. But there's other. There there's go. also other things that but go that's along not with it. No, but okay, but, well, but we're, we're talking we're, about the scientific stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about why do people have that feeling in the first place? Yes, the science That's behind what we're that. Talking about. Yeah, how well, it I evolved, what, why they what, why they have it, where it came from, why they don't have who, other who moral cares? intuitions. Because I think we it's do. Interesting. We care. <laughs> That's that. our yeah. It, also, not only that, your justification. Like the whole don't, God don't justification. Your personal sanctity is my justification. That's a terrible justification. Well, I hate you, to say it. It may question. work for Wait, some people, on. but it's not going to work for a lot of people. You you gave well, an example. Those people who are happy to violate their own personal sanctity, sure. But like, do you want to be that kind of person? 
I, n- not me wait. in particular, but there are other people in the world that I'm forced to contend no, with, like the fucking Mongols. But you, you do agree with that. Listen, hold on. hold on. Listen, I in the <laughs> same way, in the same way that the hippie commune had to contend with the Mongols, we are in a situation now where we are the ones that have to contend with the Mongols, and the Mongols think fucking animals is just fucking great. Okay. And you're the justification. That was really the least of the problems of the Mongols. Your your just the justification that you're handing over to the people who are our ideological opponents is pathetic. I got to tell you, just okay, fucking straight on. out pathetic. Well, hold, hold yeah. on, hold on. Let me te- let me tease out uh, a question here, which is that as as you gave the example, if everyone in the world thought that fucking animals was moral, and you Sargon was the one person on the planet that <laughs> thought it was immoral. Is it immoral to fuck animals? Yeah, then? that's a great question. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, but so in but is it just cases, immoral? In so all so, times, so in you all places, okay? So you are the fuck. wait a minute. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So it's not just is it when you say in all cases, all times in this hypothetical where everyone's fine with fucking animals? That's objective you, morality. Are you saying that it's it's immoral for you in all cases? Are you saying it's immoral but for everyone? David in the chat has pointed out like like. Sanctity is an X is better than Y is a value judgment and value judgments the foundations of moral systems. That's all he's saying. That is what I'm saying. Right. Okay, you, you are looking for an objective standard. Well, wait a minute. By which we you have say an objective animal- standard. Wait. wait, wait, wait. Go back to the example. So I because I still don't understand your position. That's what okay. I'm trying to understand. Are you are you okay, okay Sargon? I got heard a heavy sigh out of you and I can't I'm not <laughs> Yes, because it's frustrating that you uh, uh, you you want to have a moral conversation on non-moral terms. Yes, you're right. We do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. that's really dumb. Well, no, because we it's it's sort of like it's difficult to if you're the fish swimming in the ocean, you don't know what the ocean is. So I'm not sure that you can have this conversation unless you put yourself outside of whatever you're trying to analyze. Well, if I wanted to have a conversation, I mean, but wait a minute, isn't the that English language? I wouldn't begin in French. No, but you'd have to be able to look at it from a more objective standpoint. I mean, th- yeah, you like, would. Why? Basically, you're saying, Jonathan Haidt, why are you from wasting the outside, your fucking really time? a way of understanding it. You're, you're telling Jonathan Haidt, why are you wasting your fucking time? Yeah. Is what you're doing. You're telling the entire he's field of moral psychology. Yeah, you're telling yeah. the entire field of moral psychology they're wasting their time. A yeah. whole vocation. Okay, well, yeah. we just disagree. <laughs> yeah, we yes, just disagree. I think it's interesting. There are other entire fields dealing with morality. Mm hmm. Yes, sure. I know. More, okay. There's moral philosophy. Yeah, I've read yeah. some and moral look, that's, philosophy. That's that's fine. You don't. No one has to be interested in what we're yeah, interested in. I just no. think it's. I just think it's weird to say, oh, your arguments are bad because I'm only interested in like the most surface level aspect of a conversation. Yeah, but you're the ones who are going to be perennially trapped on the surface because you will only what? be able to give empirical reasons. And that means no, that at any you... point, the empirical reason changes, which it could, Listen. then you would be forced to concede that it's not wrong. Yeah, but wait a minute. Everyone could this, adapt oh, this position that obviously if you base whatever you're saying simply on your feelings, then no one can ever argue against anything because it's just your feelings. Well, no, you can have a conversation with another person about what makes a person sacred or what sort of, you know, personal standards one should adhere to. Sure, they could. What what one should value, right? Mm -hmm. We can have conversations about that. That's what, okay, and that's what we're having a conversation about. Yeah. Well, I I don't think it is. (laughs) Yeah, it is. We're talking about why is it that society deems bestiality as being, you know, a degradation of the person, as disgusting, Mm -hmm. as immoral. That's exactly what we're having a conversation about. Sure, because the act of having sex with something that's not a human is deviant, degenerate. We think it's wrong. It's yeah, gross. It's I know, and we're but why? talking about yeah. why, why people feel that way. Yeah, whether or not it's a, a universal, whether or not the universe cares about because this. they hold humans to higher standards than animals. And it, when, that, isn't that's it your, interesting that yeah. so many societies feel the same way? Doesn't that say something? Yes, it says that maybe there's something right and good and true about eggs. Well, oh, I agree. you're making our yeah. argument here. Yeah. What's <laughs> I love it, Sargon. Make more of our argument. Okay, but I'm not talking about science. It's not it's it's not at all contingent. Sure. Everything well, I'm saying is a priori. Let's throw away terms of science and objectivity because I think we're getting stuck up on not the issue here. I don't think that's the issue of what we're talking mm-hmm. about. Right. Okay. 
What are so we I, talking about? Here? I don't. I don't know. You, it, it sounds well, you've like you've just you, conceded the entire field now. No, it sounds like you've conceded to us entirely. 